You're muted. I am. You are right. Hello and good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on which coast you're on. Um, welcome to another episode of the Coach's Corner. Tonight, we've got an excellent batch of coaches here to talk about the amazing training and pickup opportunities at Penzik, which uh, after a long uh, hiatus is finally coming back to us in just a week from now. So I'm going to hand it off to Duke Branis to get us started. Well, first, I would like to welcome everybody uh, to uh, our Friday Night Coaches Corner. Uh, we, uh, uh, like I said, uh, we have uh, kind of gone in a drought for the last couple of years, and I think people are just finally starting to get back into it. But the good part is um, we want to cover, you know, before we all go to Penzik, you know, what, what opportunities are, are here. Um, we put a, a nice list of things together today um, to, to cover, uh, including, you know, pre-Penzik, what to expect at Penzik and post-Penzik. Uh, but first, um, of course, we have Duke Sean with us, uh, spent lots of years at Penzik learning and every other big thing you can go to, to uh, yeah. still hone his skills and still keep learning. That's a big part of being at the level he's at. Uh, we have uh, Viscount Bess, who uh, she's going to add the melee side to, uh, to uh, this conversation a little bit, because I know her. And she's like, what do you guys do at Penzik? There's no pickup fighting at Penzik. What are you talking about? Um, and uh, last one I really wanted to uh, thank for coming out is uh, Alark. Uh, he, uh, I had a chance to, to meet him early in his career and, uh, and spent a lot of years. Lots of the years. The first week of Penzik, uh, <laughs> fighting him, training him. Uh, it, he was a staple in uh, my my noon to four schedule for years and years and years. Uh, many times he was the only one that even came out. So <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, you're one of those success stories. I want to, I really it wanted to get on to so people understood. It was worth it then and it's worth it now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, it's a great point. It, you know, it was worth it then when you, when you're like, Hey, this is all new. And even when you're, even when that shine is off, it's still worth it. Right. So, um, so first let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, kind of prepping for Penzik. You know, the, the, the episode's name is Penzik, the great learning experience. And, and I, I think we should have capitalized great because it literally is the great learning experience. I think so many of us, uh, you know, kind of got our, you know, go to Penzik to get that opportunity. And, uh, so uh, we're going to start with prepping for pickup at Penzik. Um, a lot of people don't even think about that. They just show up at Penzik. They're like, well, I'll find when the fighting is. And then, you know, by the time they come home from Penzik, they're like, oh, I could never find the fighting. And and I didn't get it pick up I wanted. And there's like, and that's because you didn't have a plan, right? Yeah, you weren't looking very hard. Right. <laughs> so, Sean, why don't you go ahead and, and and talk about, like, how do you prep for big events or Penzik like this? Well, I, I, you know, I'll start with, uh, you know, my my first like introduction to to Penzik as a concept at all um, was, you know, when when uh, Brian uh, Tarragon, who was my knight, um, when he first won his when he won his first crown, he, he went out to Penzik, and you know, Penzik was one of those things that we just kind of you know heard about, but you know, none of, none of us had really experienced, and and you know, and he and he went out there, <clears throat> and uh, you know ran into a, a whole new level of fighting that he had not seen or experienced before. Um, and, and when he came back, I mean, it was pretty much, you know, we're changing everything, you know, cause I mean, just so much opportunity there. Um, I mean, the, the, the melees are, are fun. Um, but where you really hone your skill is out there on the pickup field. I mean, when you have, you know, 12,000 people at one event and, you know, and you've got some of the best fighters in the world that are on the fields of Penzik after the, after the, the, the battles are over that are just there and available. I mean, the wealth of knowledge that, that is at Penzik is, is just beyond compare. Um, 
you know, uh, Gulf Wars is a great experience for for pickups as well. Um, Australia has always been a good good place for that as well. But just the the sheer number of of people available um, is at, at Penzik is just mind blowing. Um, and you know, people that you've you know never you never met or never heard of, um, and you just have random encounters with with some of these folks if if you're making yourself available. Um, and so I think having a good open mindset is absolutely key to getting the best out of out of all of this um you know being being present and just you know just you don't necessarily have to go looking for um for those pickups you know because like i said if, if if you're out there and you say you didn't you, you couldn't find the pickups you're you're really not looking that hard um because i mean you can just stand in the middle of of the Penzik battlefield and you know you look all around you and there's there's fighting happening everywhere um and you just gotta be prepared to, to take advantage of it and just uh, show up and be there and some of this will just kind of take care of itself um but mostly you just have to have an open mind and plan on plan on being there and it's convenient if you have uh you know the, the resources and the scheduling to be able to stay out as long as as you can um you know, th those of us with households to run and, and you know, uh, kingdoms to run, uh, you know, sometimes it's a we, we don't have the time to, you know, our time is not our own. And, you know, we don't have the luxury of, of staying out and shutting down the fighting field as as we did in the days of our youth. Um, you know, so we got to make the best of the, the time that we have. But, uh, yeah, just. I mean, showing up is that that's that's the beginning and having an, having an open mind about the, the people that you're going to be fighting. So, uh, Bess, how about what what your what are your plans for Penzik? I, I know what the answer is, but so so my Penzik prep first and I would encourage this to all of you was I made sure I had my authorization card and it was still valid. So I, we had a recent event and I made sure I had my authorization card. I made sure my membership was up to date. Hey. So I encourage all of you to do that. Of course, you can always fight at Penzik, but you really need to have a sticker on your helm, whether we like it or not. And so make sure your armor is in good shape, check your straps, check your, you know, whatever needs to be fixed is fixed. So you can actually be there on the field fighting and you're not spending a day in camp, replacing straps, fixing something up. So that's the, the prep that I do well in advance. And then prior to that, yes, Bronis, I, I do train for melees. Uh, right now, my I'm doing cardio. I do- Melee, what is that? Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the elliptical. Uh, I'm doing 100 minutes. The woods battle is 90 minutes. And then uh, I make sure I can do, I can go the full 90 minutes, but then I add some extra time for say uh maybe some fighting afterwards or walking down to a rest point afterwards if i'm in the middle of the battle so i make sure that my cardio is the battle plus some but uh i that that's what i do not everybody has to do that nobody has to be in that shape but it is important for you to realize uh that here at home when we practice when we are at practice we can go back inside into air conditioning we can sleep in our our air conditioned houses at night at Penzik, we won't be able to do that. So please uh, make sure you're in the best shape that you can be. I'm not saying you have to be able to run out, uh, go out and run a marathon, but please make sure that uh, before you even get to Penzik, you're you're hydrating your body because we all know we don't drink sufficiently. We don't rest at Penzik. Uh, Sean, no matter how old we are, we, we stay up far too late. Uh, it's going to be hot. We'll be on the field. So make sure as much as you can. It's be true. Your so I... I do what I can ahead of time because I know I'm going to fall apart at Pensick. I won't get enough sleep. I won't eat right. So I make a shopping list of food that I can fast and easy that I can eat on the go, but hopefully has nutrients, protein bars that aren't chocolate because chocolate melts, even though I really love chocolate. <laughs> um, make sure I have Gatorade, you know, ahead of time, bottles ahead of time. So a lot of what I do is is check everything so that when I get to Pensac, I don't fall apart more than I absolutely have to. But number one, first and foremost, is the authorization, the membership. Make sure your membership is up to date, and I make sure my armor is in good shape so that I can pass all my inspections. 
because I'm often quite bad about waiting to the last minute to get inspected. And that's really stupid. Don't be Bess. Well, Baldrick said that uh, he forced you to, so it's fine. <laughs> That's Anyways, I have to drink. So that's that's what I do. Well, that's a that's a it's, it's a good point. I mean, you know, I, I really like that you 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 brought up the authorization and your card. We haven't had to do this in a while. Bring them, <laughs> right? So, uh, George, how do you, did you prep? You know, Always. every year you're like, oh, Bronis is going to be there. I'm getting no, ready. I, I that's what I was going to say. Like, the relationships that you build at Penzik are super important. And so bringing that, you know, planning ahead, find out who from your local area is going, find out who they know, find out who might yeah. be showing up when. And if you can, you start to try to plan your dance card, like always be, have fun with the guys you're fighting with and the gals you're fighting with at any war or anything. Find out like if you're at, at Gulf Wars, who's going to Penzik? So you can kind of put the bug in their ear then that, hey, yeah, when you're there, I want to see you on the field. I got a dance card. You're on it. And start to build that up because not only is that going to fulfill your need or your want for who you get to fight with, but the more you're around those other people, you're going to meet new friends. You're going to meet and see new things. And just constantly being able to build that up was something I always was trying to do. Meet everyone out there, see the new fighting styles. Who, who is who? What are they doing? So I was planning a lot of the social aspect for that from, from day one. Once after my first Penzik, once I kind of first got into it and met a couple people, then you just build out from there. And that's the wonder of being on that battlefield all the time is you get to fight new people, you get to see new things. And for me, it was a two week fighter camp every year. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it kind of is, right? I mean, and, and I'm going to jump in uh, and talk about it. When I was looking at this topic, when we were looking at kind of bringing up some topics on this, what I ran across was a, a nice article. I'll throw it out there. It's it's short, um, but it, it's essentially the the martial artist vacation, and this is what this is really what this is for us. It's it's the martial arts vacation, right? I mean, 100%. we get to go out there, have a good time, but there's things we have to think about, uh, and we're going to cover some of those points. Um, but you know, a couple of things I want to bring up on the pre pre kind of Penzik prep type of stuff. One. Uh, look good. Cause I'm going to tell you when you come out to the field and you're standing with a bunch of other people are doing pickups. Uh, it's a, sometimes a bit of a fashion show. If, if, if I can see that you didn't take care of your, you know, anything, your kit and, and you look sloppy and your swords are sloppy and shield sloppy and all of that kind of stuff compared to the next person next to you, which is all nailed down, like, put new tape on his swords. He's ready for Penzik. A lot of times you end up picking the other person because even even if it's the truth or not, you pick that other person because you know that he put effort into being that way. So if he put effort there, he probably puts effort in learning as well. Yeah, if you, if you don't know who someone is and they look good, you automatically gravitate towards thinking that they probably are good. Yes, they care because they care, right? Um, it makes so, a huge difference. It is, and so yeah, you know that goes right into. You know, and that means, you know, bring, you know, you don't have to bring your best kit out there because we know bringing two kits of Penzik is a pain in the butt. I've done it for years. I get it. But, you know, try to try to look the, the role a little bit. You know, if, if that, it's what, you know, make sure your shield's squared away and, and thing your helmet, the stickers can be off your helmet and all of that kind of thing. Um, and that goes right into essentially clean up your stuff. Right. Uh reach out to people if uh the you know reach out to the people that you're interested in maybe getting a fight with right yeah. and and say hey i don't know you well i watch all your stuff i'd really like to get maybe some passes with you and cover something specific especially you know it, it's like you had a chance to listen to a lot of things over the past number of years but you know the 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 idea is find those things. And we're going to talk about what those things are later. But, you know, reach out because if you reach out, that's the first point of contact. Doesn't mean you're going to guarantee to get anything back. But at that point, if they're like, sure, I'd love to help you with that, then you can start building a time and all of those places around that. And then make sure you make it because you miss it. That's probably your last chance. So yeah, I'd like to I'd like to cover cover a point on that. You know, um, nope. I had uh, years ago back when we had the uh, Legio Draconis on the on the bulletin board. Oh uh, man, yeah. As, as you may remember, um, 
I, I got a I got a message uh, about six weeks before in Australia. Um, random dude sends me a private message that says, "Hey, are you going to be at Australia? Uh, you know, I'd like to get some timing with you." Uh, you know, I'm like, you know, I'd like to get on your your list, and I'm like, well, shit, this is six weeks out. Like on my list, you are my list. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Congratulations! I have a list now. I have a list now, um, and it starts with this dude. Uh, you know, and and as that turns out, that you know, that's that's somebody that has ended up becoming a very good friend of mine over the over the years. You know, and that's something that Alaric was talking about making those connections. Um, you know that that is that is part of your path um, to to excellence for for a lifetime of fighting. Um, you know, we, you know, I had, um, I guess it was Australia 95. I, you know, I had a random encounter with the, the King of the West at the time, uh, who happened to be Duke Fabian. Um, and, and after that experience, Fabian became one of the, one of my trainers and every year at Australia, I would make sure that I got on his list and I would talk to him early and say, I'm going to be there and I want some time with you. And, you know, you, you, you build these relationships and you, and you get that time and, and, you know, over the years, I mean, over the 25 years that I've, that I've known Fabian, you know, we are, you know, we've become, besides friends, contemporaries and colleagues, you know, and now I get to talk to, talk to him, you know, as a trainer and how we train others. And I've worked with some of his students and he's worked with some of mine. And, and yeah, you, you build those relationships and those are, those are absolutely key. Um, but yeah, it can absolutely start with, you know, you, you call up, call up one of your heroes, you know, I mean, and you, people, people say never meet your heroes, but you know, shit, take a chance. Right. Yeah. Back yeah. in the oh, day, no. remember you used to have to, you used to have to like go up to one of your friends and say, Hey, do you know so-and-so can you introduce me? And you yeah. have to plan that out month. Like, like, Oh, is so-and-so going to be at Penza? Can you, and you had yeah. to plan it out that way. But now, like Sean was just saying, take the chance throw it out there randomly you can through the social media that we use go ahead and contact with someone and i don't know anyone who's really ever going to turn someone down if they're that like hungry one thing yeah exactly yeah i mean it's intoxicating yeah i'd like to jump in on that as well because what the heck uh one of the things you said was you know make sure your your shield is painted and i would you know make sure your heraldry is up to is nice it's on your surcoats or whatever you're wearing, make sure you show who you are. The only true currency we have in the SCA is renown. And the only way you, anybody knows who you specifically are is when you're on the field, it was like, you know, that fighter and they had this fleur de lis and a lion's head on top of it. And I really, I really enjoy that. Oh, you mean Sir Elizabeth and she's from Eldermere. And that is one way of, of gaining renown, which, as I say, is the only currency that we have. So in addition to maybe you being, you know, if someone's looking around going, who can I fight? They're, hey, there's the person who looks really super and they put a lot of time and effort into it. But it also helps people recognize you. Um, and so friends may come over from other other places to say hi. So I really encourage the use of heraldry wherever you can and, and make it big and make it bold and, and make sure it's, it's there to be seen. People, yeah, people having, know. having your arms passed is one of the one of the guilty pleasures of the SEA. You know, I mean, you 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 put that on on your shield and you put up a banner and your your surcoat and everything. You run around with your arms on you, and you know, everywhere I go, people know the Pegasus with the blood drops. Everywhere I go, and they're gonna they're gonna look for that. And you know, it, it's it's hanging hanging out your shingle, right? It's it's making a, just making a name and and that heraldry. I mean, heraldry works for us just like it did in the Middle Ages. You know, you, you look at somebody from across the field and then, and you're like that one right there, you know? So yeah, it's powerful stuff. All right. So let's wrap up the, the prep for Penzik and the last couple of things I have, I think best covered one of them. And that is, you know, understand you're going to be fighting melees all day. You're going to be dehydrated, get rehydrated, bring your stuff out, bring, if you plan to do pickup, bring your pickup stuff out to the field with you and put it somewhere. So you don't have to go back to camp. Because if you go back to camp, most likely you will stay in camp. So, and the last one is, you know, just remember that everybody else is also fighting, you know, and, and they may or may not have that time or may be tired. Um, but lots of, a lot of pickup after those battles. So uh, you may even want to bring, like Beth said, bring something with you that you can snack on or have somebody bring something out for you if, if you get a chance. Um, 
really, this is all about effort. Put some effort into it. Too many people just show up and that effort never comes out until they're gone and wish they had. So, Right. And if you put effort in and you're there to fight, well, then you can fight some more. And that's just terrific. Yep. So just a little wee bit of planning means that you can do a whole lot more fighting. And that's pretty awesome. Exactly. You sound like an idiot. So let's jump into this article. You know, essentially, you know, the the, the idea of a martial arts vacation and, and tell you the truth. That's what I use these as all the time. And, and not only like we, you know, Larrick and I were talking about from the beginning of your career and it's all shiny to the to the far off into your career when you're just trying to get that last one percent or you know get 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 the little bit you need or the fights you need to to keep continuing um so the first one is one of the things they say um is fix your weaknesses the first thing when you go go there on your fight vacation is the first thing you should think about is fix your weaknesses. So if you have some weaknesses that you know, find the people that are strong with them and reach out and ask them if they could help you with your weaknesses. Um, don't be afraid. This is the place to figure out how to fix those things. We should be working on the weakest thing all the time, right? Um, those, are the, those are the places that we want to spend time. doesn't mean all your time, but we do want to spend time there. Uh, so, you know, uh, the next, you know, when you're in that training session, if you're not sure about your weaknesses, ask the person after. So it's like, hey, you know, even if they're like, hey, I did, you did great, you know, say, is there any specific weakness you saw that might be something I could work on? And here's the idea, bring a book and write it down, or at least try to remember it. You don't have to have a book. I actually had a book for a long time. Um, but you know, the idea is if, if you, you get told a weakness and you never remember it, then you're not really, you're not really learning. Right. So if it, you know, you may learn after the fifth, sixth, seventh time you get hit with the same thing, uh, that it's a weakness, but, uh, it, it, you're probably better off learning after maybe the first two. And Don't then be afraid to time. ask. What's Don't that? Be Go ahead. Don't be, afraid. Don't be afraid to ask what someone just did. Yeah, because you might think a lot of the, one, one of the big things is they you might visualize it in your head one way, but because of the way you 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 see things, they're actually doing something different. So don't be afraid to ask and have them show you what they've done, because you, you might get to the hit seventh time by something because you think it's coming from somewhere else or they're doing something slightly different. So your defense is not working right. So just ask. Don't be afraid. And you right. know what? If you're fighting knights, yes. we have the biggest ego in the known world. So if you're like, wow, I really want to fight you and like you're really good, uh, for all that I'm goofing about the, the egos, it does feel nice. Um, it feels nice when someone says, I want to fight you. you. You seem like a cool person. You seem like you're smart. You seem like you know things. I've seen, I've heard people talk about you. Uh, I've watched you online. I've, I've heard people reference your your classes that you've been taking these are things that people who are teaching really like to know they like that we like to know that we're making a difference and it encourages people who are maybe doing something online and are, we're never really sure who we're reaching out who are actually reaching to speak to them and it'll it will help us know that we're, we're going out to you so i would encourage you as Sean says, meet your heroes, talk to them, say, I, I, I watched you in the crown where, you know, in the finals where you did this thing and it was really super awesome. How'd you do that thing? And then maybe you'd learn something. And, and that's a really cool thing too. Yeah. I, I think this is a good point to, to kind of mention something about this whole concept of approaching, uh, you know, pickups uh, is that, uh, you know, we often have, especially as new fighters, right? There's this hesitance to approach those best fighters in the world. And, and it comes from a couple of different um, things. Um, you, you hear people talk about, well, I don't want to fight that guy because they're a knight or they're a duke or whatever, and, and they're just going to beat me up, right? But the flip side of that is people that say, well, I don't want to waste their time. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you got to understand that we as trainers, we, we love this shit. Um, we love talking about our sport. 
Um, and, and we were right where, where you were at one point trying to get as much information as, as we can. And, you know, something we talk about quite a bit on this show is the idea that the people who have the information that you need are dying to give that information away to people who are actually going to do something with it. We, besides the fact that as Knights, it's our job to be available to you, to be able to teach you these things. We want to give this information away to people um, who are actually going to do something with it. And that means we're going to give this information to hundreds of people who may or may not do anything with it. Because, you know, again, getting back to those relationships that we were talking about earlier, you know, when, when you make that connection with somebody and you give them a thing and years later you, they come back and they use that thing on you. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if people understand how satisfying that is uh, to, to have somebody learn something so well um, that they execute it against you or that they make it better. Right. You have to understand that we're, we're not just here to, to, to make ourselves feel better about the, about the, the fights that we're going to win. Right. I, I, you know, I'm not interested in, in any victories in the pickup field. I'm interested in you becoming a better fighter and I'm not interested in not, not just, not just better, but I don't want you to be as good as me. I want you to be better than me. That's the evolution of our sport. I want you to be better than me. So I have to chase you later and that we can become colleagues later and we can discuss these things and figure out how we can make all of our sport better. And, but that comes from like, just throw it out there. It doesn't matter how good somebody is and don't be afraid to, to ask and don't think that you are not worth our time at whatever level you are fighting at. As long as you're willing to put in the effort, like Bronos was saying, effort is everything. If you are going to put the work into what, into what we do, we're like, at some point you don't have to ask me, for input on your fighting because I'm just going to throw it at you because I know that you're actually going to do something with it. I know you're going to put in that effort and that is worth my time. So don't ever think you're not worth our time. Just come up and ask. So let's, let's jump to three right now. We'll come back to two because this is exactly what we're talking about here. Um, number three is there's no, no, uh, no better, uh, nobody better to learn from than a world champ. You know, again, this is a martial arts forum that it came off of. It's true. Under, in our sport, there's no better place to learn than from some great fighters across the SCA. Um, you know, these are the people that will find the small things that may help you and that you need to break out of some stuff. They they may offer you advice that you can't really use, but they most likely will give you something to work on, something to think about. But they will absolutely give you an experience. So I, I'm going to just go through a couple of pieces and you already covered many of them. And that is be respectful. Because if you don't, if you're not respectful, you're not going to get very many fights. Uh, listen, you, you, if you're going there with a, a full cup, again, you're not going to get very many fights. And the people around watch and they won't give you very, very many fights either. Can I follow, uh, I'm, I'm going to say something to that. Go ahead. One of the most important things experiences I had at Penzik was not the fighting itself, but it was getting the stand behind people like Bronis and Sean and Michael and all these great fighters as they're watching the fight on the yes. field and listen to what they're saying about it. Because the points that they're making and saying, oh, the shield is here or the foot is in the wrong spot. When you start to see those things, they're telling you what great things to look for. And the more you listen, the more you build up that fighting vocabulary, and then you start to see those things for yourself. And that's one of the greatest elements of education that you can get from being at a place like Penzik. So, Ron, can I jump in on that? Yeah, go ahead. Just to echo this, sometimes when when people are getting, when there's training going on, and, and in say, a say, I'm saying to somebody, I noticed that you did this thing. Um, if you do this this thing, but slightly differently, then you know blah 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 blah. It'll be good. Often, but not always, um, somebody will say, "Oh, well, thank you, I appreciate that." But sometimes I get, "Yeah, well, but see, here's the thing. I when when I'm trying to give constructive criticism, and I'm hoping I'm doing it in the right way, I'm not trying to tell you you suck. I'm not trying to tell you you're a terrible person. Nobody is ever trying to do that. So 
you might say, I would like to be able to do what you said, but oh, my bicep was torn off my arm. So I literally mechanically can't do that. And that's okay, because that's information I wouldn't have had. But if you, but Bronis talks about being respectful and listening. It's not sitting there going, yes, sensei, but it's listening to what they say and, and saying, I see what you're saying. And, and even if you don't necessarily agree, and if you're on Coach's Corner, you know I don't always agree, at least not right away. That's why we hired you. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, I don't understand. Like you said to do this or that, but so uh, it's still, it's still, you're not, you're being open and receptive to the information. You're not putting up walls to say, I can't hear you because you're telling me I suck and you tell me I'm awful. And, and you're, it's not that uh, we're really, really and truly. And if you watch coaches corner on any regular basis, all the coaches, all the guests, everybody wants all the fighters all the time to be better. And that is just so true. I wish you guys could hear the private conversations we have. It's so true. So when you're meeting the coaches and you're meeting people who have been guests and they're trying to tell you something, please, please think that they're trying to give you the very best that they can give you for you. Um, and that is that would be, I think, what Bronis is saying. When you're listening respectfully, accept the fact that perhaps they see something that will make you even better. Not that you suck now. You're good now, but let me try to help you be better. I yeah, think. and and that's and that's exactly it. And and there's a couple more points I'm going to bring here. And one is, be patient. Um, a lot of times you're like. Well, nobody's giving me a fight. Nobody's giving me a fight. I got bad news. I've been to Penzik and people wouldn't give me a fight. So, and I just hang around. I start talking with people. And next thing you know, you have a fight, you know, and it doesn't have to be with that one person. You need, if, if you pick up some other fights around, people will see that you're not just singling out people and, and ignoring everybody. Because if we only ignore, if we ignored everybody that was at our level, then guess what? You know, everybody would just be fighting at their own level, right? So you may not get fights. So the idea is be a trainer. I Go out there and fight somebody that came out there that sits their first Penzik, that they're out there to fight and help them. If we see you helping others, most likely that next person is going to try to help you as well because it's a community. But if you're not giving to the community, you're probably not going to get, again, recognized as fast. Because you're just sitting there waiting for it and not giving back to the community. So be patient. Listen. Watch. Um, and the last one is be the fly on the wall. And this is where George actually just came back. He's like, be that fly on the wall who just stands in the corner, listens. Ask, ask the coach, you, you mind if I listen to this? You don't even need to be fighting to learn what is going on. Ask him, if do you mind if I, I stand here and listen to what you're saying? You know, you mind if I watch? I guarantee you to be like, absolutely. And they will draw you into that conversation. And yeah, they'll start pointing out things on, specifically to you. They'll be like, yeah. did you see that? Did you see why that makes a difference? And right. and then 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 suddenly you find you've made a friend. Exactly. And the next time you're out there, they're like, hey, come on over. I want to introduce you. I'll go fight my squire or, or whoever. And that's how you meet people. And that's how you start building up that great like set of fights that you've always wanted to do. Exactly. Last piece. Here's, here's the one thing I will say, do not do. This is hard, hard, hard to take this vocabulary out of your normal day setting. And that is these two words, yeah. I know. Because if you know, why are you asking us? <laughs> okay, I'm, it's, a, it's a personal thing to me. But after you hear I know for the third time, then I'm not training you anymore. Because... You already know. So why am I, I just said, I just had to think about how to help you. And at the end I get, I know. So I took all that time to think, tried to explain it to you. And then I get, I know. Well, that also goes along with, yeah, but. Yeah, but, oh man, that's even worse. <laughs> That'll get you cut off real fast. Oh boy. Yeah. Because at that point you're not there to learn again, yeah. the empty cup. Yeah. No, the, 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 I've seen a guy with three Dukes around them, you know, like easily over 10 reigns between the three of them. 
And the guy's like saying, yeah, but you have, and every single one of them has tried to, to explain the same situation a little differently to give them a little different perspective. And after that, we've all just been like, all right, dude, there's nothing we can do for you. Thanks. Thanks. You know, yeah. and it's, it's just an indicator that you're, you're not open to yeah. getting the information that is, that is available to you. And again, you're, you're coming there with a full cup and, and you, you think you've got any answers and you know, the, the, yeah, but I do it this way, or, or this is why I do it this way or whatever, you know, like that's what's saying, if you've got an injury and you know, you're compensating for an injury, that's yeah. a different thing, right? Totally different. Yeah. You know, if it's, if, if there's, and, and honestly, if you have, you know, if you have something that needs to be worked around, right? If you physically can't do a thing because you need to work around that, we can find a solution to whatever, whatever it is, you, you know, you're, you're struggling with as long as we're not getting the yeah, but if it's like, you know, uh, you know, I've had, uh, I, I've had, uh, you know, when I talk to people about, about footwork, you know, I have the basic stance that I use, um, which for me is basically toes forward. Um, but I've worked with some folks who had, um, had a lifetime of, of dance experience, um, particularly ballet. And if you're doing ballet, it hurts to point your toes at your target. Right. And so, you know, so when I, 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 you know, find this somebody, I'm like, well, try putting your feet this way. And they say, I can't because I have this experience. I'm like, okay, so it's not ideal. Um, or it's at least not the way that I do it, but let me find a way for you to get the same basic concepts that I'm trying to work with, with this limitation that is, that, that, that is, you know, something that's from a lifetime of, of an, of another experience, you know, that's not, yeah, but that's, this is a very real thing that I have to deal with. We are going to work around that sort of stuff. We're not going to work around. Yeah. But I like doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I well, that's, that's getting you killed or, or it's going to get you a, it's going to get you a, a certain percentage of victories against a certain caliber of fighter. Yep. And that's it. If, if you want to be elite, if you want to be world-class, you can't come to me with this yeah but bullshit. No. Um, we have a question. I'm gonna go ahead and post it here. So, you know, on a side note, there are a lot of people like Sagan. He doesn't fight anymore. So, how do we find coaches at events? <laughs> go ahead, Sean. Go ahead, or uh, LR, do you want to uh... just uh, listen again? Listen to the other people. T find out who the reputations are and start putting faces together with names because you'll find that oh like oh so and so is here today we'll see who that person is find out what you know oh they were king four times back in from 86 to 92 or something <laughs> find out who yeah. that is and and li again listen and then build up that network go up and introduce yourself say hey i'm so and so i'm still new or i'm you know just moved here or whatever it might be i've heard you're great if you ever see me fight i'd really love you give me a couple pointers no one's gonna say no no nope, absolutely well I, i'll tell you um what? one of my experiences with, with that with is how i met bronos um i was uh i was crowned at penzik in 2005 and you know i was i was just walking off the field uh, at the end of the day and you know i there's this dude standing next to a hay bale and like, you know, nobody else around him. Uh, I'm just walking off and I just look at him and I'm like, it seems like I should know you. And he said, <laughs> and he said, I'm Bronos. And I said, oh, that's why I should know you. You know, um, some of some of these guys stand out, even if you don't have a bunch of people crowding around them going, feed me, feed me. That, you know, they 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 carry a presence about them. Um, that, that sometimes is just hard to miss. And uh, yeah, that's how, I'm, that's, how, that's how I met Ronos. I was like, uh, that's a guy I should know. I don't know why, but, you know, and there was nothing he did. Didn't say anything, whatever. It was just, I just didn't realize you guys met that late. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. We're out there. You know, we're out there till the, till, till the sun goes down. You know, we're out there and available until there's nobody else left to teach. If, if we at all have the, the capacity and the time to, to do that. So it's, it's, it's not that hard. Um, just hang out for a bit. And that goes along with that being patient thing. Look, look for the people. Because to say, to say something. Armor. So within two or three days of Penza getting going, 
we've all already fought each other because we haven't seen each other in a year. We've already <laughs> done that. So we want to fight someone else. So come up and ask, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Look how nice these guys are. Like in all seriousness, it's like, Sean, I didn't really know you before Coach's Corner. And by not really know you, I didn't know you at all. I'd seen you on Coach's Corner. But in all seriousness, you know, you meet people and you think, oh, well, that's Sean or that's Brunus. He must be like a snotty stomach pants. But they're not. They're really, really nice people. And it's everybody I have met through Coach's Corner is really nice. And I'm actually kind of a shy person myself. And so it's it's hard for me to to go up and to talk to somebody. But I one of the things I've learned is that you talk to a fighter about fighting, by God, you're oh, going to get a conversation. And so even if you're not sure if you want to fight them, because maybe it, maybe it's Sean, maybe it's Bronis, maybe it's Rongvald, or maybe it's Dukes or so-and-so, and you're a little bit, you know, you're not certain. It's okay if you want to do this slowly, strike up a conversation on a Monday and say, you know, get to know them a little bit and go, well, son of a gun, they're a nice person. And then, you know, uh, I'm not fighting today, but hey, if I'm here tomorrow, would would you be here tomorrow? And then the, they'll say yes, or they'll say, well, actually, you know, I got to go be king or something. But you'll you'll get to know them ahead of time, so that when you come out to fight them, they're not strangers anymore. That and and if you're putting the time in on the field at Penzik, don't be surprised if other if 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 you haven't been noticed already. And people know who you are because if I'm from one kingdom and Bronis is like I'm from the west now and Bronis is from the middle and I see someone and I'm like hey who's that and he'll be like oh that's so and so from my fight practice yeah. they're really good and so then like you would be surprised you're walking down the street and saw you know one of us might just be hey so and so hey you know or I heard I heard I heard we need to fight yeah exactly and you're like <laughs> what and you make some like we want to do that because. It, it, I know when it happened to me when I was a kid, it made my day when Duke Cohen was like, hey, Alaric. I'm like, oh, first off, you know my name. Is this bad? You know? And he's like, Bytor and I are about to go to lunch. Do you want to go with us? And I was like, whoa, you even know who I am. And I'm going to lunch with you guys? <laughs> Hell yeah. And, and, and you just start to – that opportunity is there. Don't think that, that if you're putting in the effort and you look good and you're – being helpful to others that people don't identify that because we do it is recognized all right so again another question i'll throw it up here uh and it's actually two people asked this at the exact same time are there some <laughs> some days better than others when looking to do pickup at penzik um i will First tell week. you that earlier the better because people burn out towards the end of Penzik and many people, some of your best people from around the country have to leave earlier than the rest of us who live locally. And so, Bronis, is something happening on August 5th from one until five on the field? I think from <laughs> one to five, uh, at, at least uh, a couple of our coaches talked about going out and uh, and playing or, and, and gonna just be out and hanging out. Uh, and then we're talking about maybe five o'clock, uh, mid-realm, if, if there's, Space either under the mid or the east battlefield fly. We'll uh, do a, a kind of meet the coaches, uh, the coaches corner uh, coaches, and uh, sit down and talk and uh, just kind of ad lib and have a little show. We'll actually just stream it at the same time. Uh, but I think it'd be great to meet everybody face to face. Anybody who wants to come out and uh, and definitely answer some ask some questions and get a chance to meet some folks. So kind of a little social at Penn. So one to five on Friday uh uh, for sure we'll have some people out there fighting and then at five o'clock we'll find a space and uh, right now i'm going to try to plan it for uh the mid-realm uh battlefield fly um but if that falls through we'll we'll see where else we can put it all right another Um, another thing following up on that is yeah if you don't see anyone on the field be the person on the field yeah don't put your gear on and make yourself conspicuous if someone will see that you're on the field Someone is going to come out and fight you, I promise. But the other person might not want to go because, oh, there's no one out there. It's hot or whatever it is. You know, bring a couple of waters with you. Line them up on a, a hay bale and sit and wait and, and, and look like you want to fight. I promise you, people will come out and fight. And, yeah. and, and you'll meet someone new. I guarantee you, 100%. Uh, and Ron Galder, uh just posted up, and he's 100% right. He says, Thursday through Sunday, that middle weekend is... Nothing's going on. We have opening ceremony. 
bring your stuff after people will start coming out so people are some people are just arriving and setting up but a lot of people have been there for a while already been doing some pickup those are really really big days other activities happen on those days tim used to do uh some uh something on saturday all the time um or uh, duke timothy and uh other people are always I, i've seen paul out there teaching on those days so there's <laughs> always stuff in that that time frame and then also the midweek day off that is another big day everybody's like hey this is my maybe my last chance to get a day off and go do pickup so usually there's a ton of pickup otherwise right after uh and these are the really hard ones right after battles that are on the field you can usually get about an hour of pickup uh either on the top side of the field or in front of east realm royal or in front of mid realm royal as a as a weird hint if you know there's someone you fight and you happen to know one of their squires ask them to ask for a fight you know that's or 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 Pick a fight through them, and and they'll get their knight out there to fight you, or their master, or they'll tell you when they're going to be out there, so that you can you can try to be out there at the same time. Use use the little tips and tricks to to find out who's going to be where and when, so you can be there. Because if you're not there, you don't get to fight them. All right, so let's. I'm going to jump back, and we'll make this one real short because I, I just want to get through it, but. There's also, we worked on our weaknesses. Let's talk about working on our strengths, just a, a real quick one. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have to work on my strength. It's my strength. But that's not necessarily all you got. You, you want to see if that strength works against some top people. You also, the stronger you get at something, the, the more bread and butter it becomes for you. And, and you know, there's there's that space where that one shot that is the, 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 that's really good for you. You may have not memorized it. You may, you may have to set it, take too long to set it up. The better and better you get at it, the more it becomes instinctual to you, the more it becomes a habit to you, and the more you start relying on it. So this is fundamental in any martial art and boxing. You get, you essentially, you watch Sean or uh, Alaric fight, and and they're like, they'll throw the same two, three shots. And, and you know, I, I sit on the field sometimes at, at Heroics, and I watch Ron Goller, and I'm like, ooh, he's going to hit him this way now, and then Ron Goller hit him that way, and I walk off the field, and I'm like, Someday you're going to have to find another shot because <laughs> this is getting pretty boring. But today's but, not you know, it, it, And everybody knows those shots. They know how Tyson's <laughs> going to knock you out, but he still does it. It's so that's what working on your best, you know, working on your strength yeah, and, does. And and remember that in your little pool where you're from, you might be the best at something, or you may have used it to overcome everyone who's around you. Once you're at Penzik you might find that trick doesn't work or someone else has seen it or you might find someone who's even better at it than you are and that's where you get the opportunity that's why Penzik is so great because you get to to meet and see people who are bringing all those other tools to the field and you get to test against them and and you suddenly realize that this thing that you've been doing at home you won the last five tournaments you were in and then suddenly you meet someone from Atlantia and it just doesn't work or you meet them, someone from on the other the other side of the country from where you're from and then you have to rework the whole thing so <laughs> you get the penzik you have a great attitude and suddenly your trick doesn't work against these guys and you have to start over but by the end of penzik you've been able to work with everybody and improve even more then when you go home it's even better yeah i, I actually had an experience like that in uh 2005 and uh, when i was i was crowned I had just gone from, I mean, I won that crown with the 22 by 36 heater, right? The standard heater that I've been using for years. And then I decided I wanted to go to a smaller shield. So I, I got the 24 inch square and I picked that thing up two weeks before I went to Penzik. And, and I took it out there. I'm like, if it's going to work, it's got to work here. And if I'm going to figure out what's, how to use this thing, this is the place where, where that's going to happen. And, and, you know, I was able to kind of set aside this idea that, well, I'm king of Artemisia, so I have to be whatever uh, and just go out and, and you know, fight with a, a new thing um, and, and know that, like, the education that I need, you know, even though that, I mean, I just won crown, right? I'm the, the great mighty king of Artemisia who still needs to learn shit. And, and I knew that it was Penzik was the place where, where I was going to get my crash course and how to use this thing. Um, 
and that's yeah that that that's where you get it from that's the value of Penzik and 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 the like i mean gulf wars australia and and yep. you know all of the all of the inner kingdom events for exactly that region that Elric was talking about like people who you don't know um and, you know and and you may match up well with a particular weapon system but then you go find somebody who you haven't seen before and and i'll tell you one of the great things about Penzik and some of the some of the deeper lists that are out there the, the the greatest test of your actual skill is unknown skill versus unknown skill yep. you being able to go out there and fight somebody you'd never seen before you'd never heard of before um and you just you your fight has to be good enough and you just execute whatever your fight is you can't rolodex somebody you can't say oh well, this guy really likes to do this some and sometimes you're running into somebody so so unknown you don't even know what kingdom they're from because sometimes if you know what kingdom they're from there there's some tendencies that we have kingdom to kingdom that might kind of influence who that what that fight is but unknown skill versus unknown skill and I can tell you, I was very fortunate to have that that year in 2005 when I met um, uh, Kiartan, who is, you know, now now Duke, Duke Montier. I knew nothing about him. I just randomly. And it was that thing that Alaric was talking about. I, you know, we were, it was at the after That's the, the Woods battle. Oh, after okay. the Woods battle. And there was nobody, nobody anywhere. Right. And I, I, I was just getting done. I was I was heading heading back to camp and I come out of one of the pavilions on the on the field and I look up on the hill and there's four or five of these guys fighting. And I'm like, let's go, let's go there. And I had random chance encounter with somebody who's become one of my best friends. And to to be able to to have somebody that is that good uh that I didn't know and never heard about was just an amazing experience to be able to just execute my fight and find out if it's either good enough or it's not. And, and if you're going to work on something or if like you're Sean and you go out there with a new shield, don't be afraid to tell people that you're working with something, yep. have use them. They're going to have to help you like, Oh, it, this looks open or this looks, you know, work with them, get, take that opportunity to communicate what you're trying to do. And you'll find that most of the time your opponent will work with you to help you achieve your goal. So let's let's go ahead and move on. Uh, the next number five is uh, get inspired to train harder. So when you're surrounded by world champs and individuals that want the same thing that you do, there's no doubt in you'll feel inspired that you're training in a whole new level. In other words, sometimes you, you, you at home, you get in this lull. Go find those people because they will pull you out of it. They will give you things to think about. And they will re-inspire you to go home and learn more. But you know, this is that's this is the place where you, you want to remember those things. So if that means, you know, go home later and write down, hey, this is I want to keep trying this. I want to do that. I want to talk to this person. I want to, you know, any any type of thing that you want to do later, try to remember it. Because if you don't, then you're wasting your time, right? You you're trying to stay inspired. Um, you know, the, you know, ask them, Hey, you know, uh, Sean, you mind if I, you know, you, I love this idea. Do you mind? I talk to you if I, you know, talk to you on Facebook later or something, can I send yeah. some video to you? Right. And I guarantee you almost hundred percent of the time it's going to be yes. Hey, I, I will, I will throw out just a slight caveat on that. Um, social media being what it is, um, if you've had an interaction with somebody and you want to connect with them later, it, it, it probably helps for you to send them a private message. Yes. Not just a friend request, because I may not <laughs> recognize you out of armor. And, you know, I'll be honest, I've got like 400 Facebook friend requests that are just kind of sitting in limbo because a bunch of people like, like, I have no idea who these people are. And I don't know if they're just you know, like data mining and, and like getting as many friends as they want. But if we've had an interaction you may just want to, you know, send me a message and just say, "Hey, we fought at Penzik. I don't know if you remember, but uh, you know, I'd appreciate some some input." And and honestly, I've had people on Facebook that just send me random message out of the blue. I've never met these people, but now they're asking me a question, and now we're having a conversation, and that's a very different thing from, you know, "Hey, I saw your name on Facebook, so I just added you." So just a little caveat there. How how many times have have you you can recognize someone on the field in their armor and you know who that person is and then you're talking to someone off the field and it's 
not until half an hour later that you realize, oh, wait, that's a guy who is wearing the, the blue or has the, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so, so you know, you, we, you may make a connection in one place, but remind us who you are, like Sean yeah. was saying, so that we can continue that connection and keep it going. And literally, we might see you on the field and recognize your heraldry, but then you're at a party that night and someone's talking and you're like, wait a minute. Oh, wait, you're, I know who you are now. I, we were talking on the field. Yeah. And, you know, part of that conversation, you know, if, if, if you want, if, if this, these people inspire you and, and, and you find that place at the end, here's, there's simple words to say to, to keep, to keep that connection working. And that is thank you. Right. Super easy to say. If we all said it more often, this would be a much better place because all of us are there trying to everyone. I'm not just talking to us coaches. Everyone is there to try to challenge each other, try to push each other and try to help each other. And that's the best part about the society. Um, the other thing you can do is after Penzik, you know, say, hey, you, you gave me this information at Penzik, you know, private message. Hey, you gave me this information at Penzik. I want to say thank you because this is how it's been going. There is no better words that come from somebody than that, you know, other than, hey, I won crown after fighting, you know, after learning from you. But, you know, it's the the idea being there are it's just those little thanks will will prime you for next year when you want to get re-inspired again. Right. That's that's yeah. it. That little. And and these are, you know, this is out there. There's, you know, I'll post up this the, the little thing I wrote. So. But these are the things that, that that help you with your training over, you know, what hopefully is 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. So uh, number six is a simple one. And best covered this a lot earlier. Get yourself competition ready. Hydrate. Plan. We're talking about planning. Rest. Sleep is good every once in a while. Uh, and eat well. Uh, eating well is something that's super important. Uh, just eating chocolate is not eating well. <laughs> the best likes chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Number seven. Are you in a plateau? You know, this is the time that you got a great chance to get out of that training plateau. Right. I mean, Larry, you're, you're kind of shaking your head. What do you think on that? One? I used to find that, that, um, I would top out and do pretty well about March or April of every year and then kind of cruise through the summer. And then when I get to Penzik, all those parts, the rest would get kicked off them. But more importantly, there'd be new things and new concepts I'd see and learn on the field where someone would show me or, or show me something that I was doing that I could do better, yeah. whether or not it was defense or footwork or or whatever it might be. And then suddenly when I get back from Penzik and I had two weeks where I'd been tuning all this new stuff up with all these different fighters and go back out, jump up again, a whole new level every year after Penzik for 10 or 15 years in a row. It was, it was amazing just what that environment can do for you. I, I'll throw something out on the plateau as well. Um, the reason that we get into the plateau is because we stop learning um, we, we, you know, we learn for a bit and then we find something that works and then we just kind of stick with that because it works and, you know, and winning is, is sexy and feels good. And, you know, you know, I, I'm going to keep winning some fights here. Um, but you're, you're not learning anything anymore and going to someplace like Penzik, um, you're, you're, you're going to find out that, I mean, that's, that is one way to get out of the plateau because, you know, all of a sudden you are faced with, you know, like, like Eric was saying, um, you're faced with something that, you know, what you were doing may work at home, but now it doesn't work against a certain, a certain caliber of fighter. And that is, you know, that, you know, we're, we're all, we're all seeking out the information we can, but the better you get as a fighter, the more difficult it becomes to find those people that are going to be able to either identify your deficiencies or exploit um, your plateau, the things that you've been working on that have been working just fine at home. And you're going to run into somebody that can actually exploit what you're doing. And it becomes far more difficult to find those people that can do that 
that can put you back in that learning mode because that's the thing with the the plateau you know it happens because we stop learning and the only way to get back you get out of that plateau is to get back to learning and get back to trying and 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 it is going to take some hard lessons you know with you getting exploited and and you know having somebody that can actually send you home going i need to fix some stuff and i need to get back into the learning mode so you know uh on the plateaus are probably some of the hardest signs and sometimes you remember a plateau is there specifically because you're not done learning the thing that 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 you've learned really hard over the past x number of days in other words you know you're still working on making it right and as soon as it does hit right and things start changing mentally you change and you can move on again um so don't be afraid of plateaus um but there are definitely some that you you linger in so you have to watch those and and sometimes you just have to leave something else back for a little while try something new to kind of refresh but motivation that those things in common going to a place where you have lots of people that are in a that they love that learning environment oftentimes will pull you out of those plateaus so so this is a great place to do it almost any large event like that is um uh so uh think about that if, if you feel like i don't want to fight anymore i just not into it maybe you've hit that point where you you need motivation again go out a day find a couple find three people you would like to fight and say hey when are you going out and because i'd love to maybe come and listen and get a pass or two with you and you may find that that reinvigorates you so um I, and i apologize i've been watching uh, our uh, uh our producer and uh, one of our coaches is talking on the side here on our uh in our comments area and Saib actually brings up a really really uh good point and uh, we actually covered this one in great fighters of youtube uh alert and that was we went through every kingdom and talked about different the different rules and traditions and culture in each of those kingdoms and so we have to remember when you go to penzik sean said it you may not even know a kingdom they're from one of the things that's nice is hey what kingdom are you from and then understand what maybe their culture and rules are so one may be, hey, if they thrust you in the side of the head, it's good in their kingdom, right? If, you know, if you leg them, crossing over the plane of the knees may be not something they do in their kingdom, so they're not used to it. So just be aware. And if, if you see there's, they kind of look at you funny, then that may be time to ask a question. So I, I want to throw that out there. Because that's that's part of being courteous and getting more fights in the, in the future. And and really, in the end, it, it helps you understand. Now, that doesn't mean you 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 can also say, hey, I'm sorry. You know, that's you know, usually every time I do that, they're like, nope, we get it. Your rules are this way. I'm good with that. And and that just helps you understand the game better helps you push yourself. Sometimes you may give them room. Sometimes you may step up so they learn that. How do essentially, hey, I, when people do break the line of your knees, you have to know how to fight in a, a different place. So you're helping them. So just be aware. It's all about communication in those scenarios. Uh, thanks, Bess, for uh, talking with Side there. Thanks, Side, for bringing all that up. So uh, let's talk uh, number eight, which is the last one on this list. Um, get all your questions answered. Uh, you know, this is going, you know, again, this comes down to planning. If, if you're like, hey, I'm going to Penzik, I'm going to get a chance. I want to work on all of these things. But that doesn't mean you actually have to physically work on, on those things. But, you know, in a fight or in armor, but find the people and try to, you know, kind of go to Penzik like, hey, I want to know more about these three things. Find the people to talk to. I guarantee even around a fire at a party. If you start talk, ask somebody this question, they will fill, they'll, they'll answer it the best they can. Far long, that, that answer will be far longer than you even want it to be. So just beware. So go again, this comes in with a plan about the things you want to get out of Penzik. And, and then, you know, try to get them done. Check them off as you go. 
I want to jump in on that, Bronis, for a yeah. second. I think it's really important to have a realistic plan. I want yeah. to learn all the stuff from all the people. Um, yeah, no. It may not be the way that that it worked best for you. I myself am a slow learner. I uh, <laughs> I need to have time to absorb the information, to think about the information before I before I can absorb it and make it my own. Uh, so, what? I've never seen that. I know you're probably shocked, right? <laughs> So for me, if I were to go and speak to like 18 people on a single day and I got 18 people telling me, you know, four different things each, something's going to fall out of my head. I'm going to get confused. I'm not going to remember it because that's not how I learn. So for me, that wouldn't necessarily be a realistic plan. Earlier, Brahmas had, had suggested bringing out a notepad perhaps to write, down, write things down. I'm not even good about doing that because I'm sweaty and then I forget to write things down and I'm all happy and excited. So I think you have to recognize who you are, make a realistic plan for yourself and focus on your plan. Don't, it's, I think it would be easy to deviate. Sean's here. Bronis is here. You know, uh, Alaric is here. Oh, you know, Tom is here. I've got to speak to every single person. And while I truly, truly understand that, I think you need to, it, if you are, for example, like me, you need to make a, a more realistic, more guided plan that is actually realistic for your learning style. Uh, and, and as Bronis said earlier, respect it, uh, respect the person who's teaching you. So for when I think about that, I think not only respecting, say I go to Bronis, I like, hey, Bronis, you know, we were talking about this thing. So I was working on it. And then if I monopolize him for, say, two hours, I am doing an injustice to the other people who are also there who would like to get a chance to to say work with Bronis? So be aware of who you're speaking to, the amount of time that you're taking, and also the people who may also be waiting to learn from that person. So it's just something situational awareness, also good in melees. <laughs> I knew you were going to get melee in there sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, we're, we kind of just kind of burn through those those kind of plans idea, you know, all of the things we can look at on our fighter vacation, um, you know, and, and we can talk tons about it. I think everybody really, you know, wants to know more. I, I would say people do read, read their Facebook at Penzik. So if you know stuff is coming up, everybody share it, share it out on SCA Coaches Corner. Say, you know, hey, uh, is... Uh, you know, it will, in fact, we'll pop up something or at Penzik saying, hey, post your what's going on, what's going on fighting at Penzik here and uh, pop some comments in there. We'll we'll post that so that if people are like, hey, I'm going out to the field tomorrow. Anybody wants to come, then, you know, maybe uh, we can share and give everybody a place to uh, uh, at least talk about when they're going to be out in the field. Now, um, something that, that goes along with that is. Heraldry works both ways. Not only does it let people know who you are, you get to know who other people are. Mm -hmm. So when you're out on the field, especially on those practice days, and you see certain heraldry standing next to certain heraldry and about <laughs> to fight, go watch. Drop what you're doing yes. and see some of these fights that you're not going to be able to see anywhere else. It might be someone from the West Coast fighting the East Coast, the North or versus the South, or, or, or some of these greats just coming together. And they're working on stuff. They're doing things. Listen to what the other fighters around them are saying and just watch the, the best fighters do their thing. Being a Penzik gives you that opportunity. You're not going to get it anywhere else. And hey, if you, don't, if you don't know what my heraldry looks like, you don't know what Bronos' heraldry looks like, um, you know, there's, there's a certain, uh, certain range of heraldry that is easily available and identifiable. And that, those are the crowns of the known world. Yep. Look at the heraldry of the crowns of the known world and make yourself familiar with that heraldry. Because when you see a couple of tabards with crowns and laurel wreaths standing next to each other, talking, fighting, that's probably a good place for you to start. Yep. So here's, here's another good one. And we get this a lot in our camp and I got this a lot through the years and my squires got the benefit from it and other people, other friends of mine. And that is, you know, Swim with the great whites. In other words, if you have somebody that's in your camp that is a very good fighter and they're going out to the field, go put your stuff on. Go because while people are waiting to fight that person, guess what you're going to get? 
cast offs. Oh, you mean cast offs? It's it's no, yeah. It's a good fights. It's just they have to wait. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you know, the good part is you're getting that earlier comment that we made about you know finding people that know people. Well, here's somebody he may not even know those people, but you're getting involved in a community that's right there. That all you know, they're coming out. They want those fights with that person, and they're listening. And you're listening, and the next thing you you have something in common, and then you're out there fighting. And this is that's that introduction. And yeah, then right. you know when when that person's like, okay, you're up next, and and you know they go out there, and then you go back. It's like, oh man, this is what he did, and you're like, oh yeah, I know he does that to me all the time, <laughs> and this is how I stopped it once. You know, it's <laughs> it's well, those right. kinds of things that really make that community. I, I don't know how many people I learned I got to fight or introduced to for the first time because say I was out there with Branos and he's someone else has come over to fight with him. And then you turn around and someone's like, Hey, do you want to go a couple? And it turned, you're like, yeah, sure. I'd love to. And and you got on the field and you're like, Oh, I, Hey, I'm Alaric. And they're like, Oh, I'm Duke so-and-so. And you're like, no crap. Really? Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know? Wow. And you asked me to fight. That's awesome. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and for, I... for years, that's how I met everybody. You're just, you, you have to, Put yourself in the spot. Yes. And and then you will be asked. People want to do that. I would like, say I, there I, is can't, another... I cannot overestimate, you know, the, the benefits to me of going to Penzik with Brian while he was king of Aidenvelt and just hanging out as his squire. And everybody wants to fight the king of Aidenvelt. And then Brian gets done. And he's like, Hey, would you mind a few fights with my squire over here? And you know, and I mean, I'm I'm I, I've been surrounded by the best fighters in our sport from day one, uh, just because I was, I just happened to be in the right spot. That happens all the time. Bess, you were going to say something. Yeah, there's another unintentional benefit from this. I know right now we're talking about singles, but <laughs> once again, it ties into melees. And mm -hmm. that is at Penzik, uh, especially during a melee or one of the big battles, tempers can run hot. It's really to everybody's advantage. If you know who the other people are, Say I'm, I'm facing off against somebody and and something's coming in like like if I I see Sean I'm like Sean what was that and he said oh uh, yeah it was a shot and it was good I'm like okay cool thanks I just literally didn't know or something's coming in weird and they're like uh, you can talk to each other across uh, to facilitate communication during the battles and I think that can really help diffuse a lot of the the um, tensions that can be up that can happen during battles. So that is an unintended consequence of having friends is that it really helps uh, or can aid in bringing down the tension of a battle. Uh, if, say, there's a hold going on and someone's all pissed off at me because Bess isn't taking shots, say, or their perception is Bess isn't taking shots, Sean can walk over and say, hey, Bess, people have noticed that a couple of times you appear to be or no, I've been watching that because I know best because she's friends. So I was watching and she, I, I've actually seen them and they're not coming in. And that is a way of helping to diffuse the situation. So I, I would venture to say that that is another unintentional uh, consequence of making friends on the singles field. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. Makes all the pens better. So, hey, let's uh, let's go into the wrap up part. And that is post pens. Um, you know, what do you do when you get home? You know? Uh, it's, on it's the couch. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, after you're done getting rested and cleaning your armor, uh, and, and yes, you do have to take it out of a bag, out of your bag before next Penzik. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but you know, take that time. Uh, people took the time with you. Take that time to appreciate it and review it. Um, you know, if if you didn't write anything down in your book or you don't have a book. Maybe it's time to just jot yourself an email and say, hey, here's the things I really I got from Penzik and I want to remember some of these so I can go back and look at this later. Put it out on your refrigerator, you know, put put some key items, pick three things that you think you can that you want to do and put them on your refrigerator. Um, you know, reach out to the people that helped you, uh, that inspired you, that made Penzik fun for you. And I'm not just talking on the pickup field. I am talking Penzik. I don't care if they're at a great party, you had the best conversation of your life. Thank them. 
uh, because you know what? They'll come to Penzik next year and you have another friend and you, you, you might run into that best scenario where, where, you know, you're across the field from somebody you're like, Hey man. And that, that whole team may have hated you one second before and you were the guy they wanted to put down. And then next thing you know, because you know, one of their people are like, Oh, he's okay. And then go practice. Take and then go prac- oh, yeah, practice and practice what you learned. Try to try teaching it to someone else. If you learn something new, and that's one of the best ways to help you learn what works, what doesn't work, and see the things that are going on and, and like what someone else might be doing wrong with it helps you refine what you're doing yourself. Yeah, and, and, and you nailed that one on the head. And it's funny because it's it's the last item on my my list here. Practice, practice, practice. And and I think, George, you, you nailed that in, the, in that, you know, show somebody else and you learn it better. Definitely. Definitely. And if, if you just, if you just spend two weeks do, at fighter camp learning new stuff, that's a big investment. Go ah, work on your investment. Well said. <laughs> well said. I, you know, and that is that's a hundred percent. You spent all that money, and for some of us, it is fighter camp. You know, get you know, get your investment back. So, what are the kind of things you think you should be doing after Penzik, Sean? Yeah, so I, w- I wanted to a little. I mean, you guys covered that with with going home and practicing it because yeah, you know everybody gets their their freebie, right? Everybody gets their their one chance that that I'm gonna I'm gonna help them out, and you know whether or not you do something with the information I give you is going to kind of determine your access to to further information. Um, because if I see you a year later and I have to tell you the same thing because you didn't cool. bother working on it, that just gets old for me, right? But if you have done something with it and, you know, if, if, if you if you try what we're talking about and it doesn't work for you, if you're putting in that effort, I'm going to find something that works for you or I'm going to find somebody else who can find the thing that is going to work for you. Right. Because I know you're putting in that effort. Effort is everything, like Ronald said, said earlier. Um, but, you know, you coming back to me and not doing any work and asking me for more help, just it gets old. Right. And it's not that you're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. Right. But I, I, I kind of wanted to go back to um, the, the thing on patience uh, that we were talking before and how you get access to us, right? Um, <clears throat> when, when we're out there on the field, I, I know for me, every every fight that I have, every pickup fight that I have is is a is a an, an opportunity for analysis, right? I I am expecting, you know, we, we talk about this thing where, where sometimes you have to ask if somebody wants feedback or that sort of thing. I'm always working under the, under the assumption that there's an analysis happening and that there's going to be feedback happening. One of the, the constants with fighting me at Penzik is that somebody is going to learn something and it may be you and it may be me. I mean, if you put a good, good ass weapon on me, I'm going to figure some stuff out and I'm going to go home and work on it. Right. But I'm always under the assumption that, you know, I'm not here to just, you know, get a string of fights and fight as many people as I can and move on. I'm a trainer. I am here to teach people. Right. And I'm going to take that time. You're going to get more than just a set of fights with me. You're going to get a conversation afterwards, right? But because I'm spending that time, you, you have to be patient. If, if you want to fight with me, if you want to fight with some of these trainers, you have to understand that, you know, as, as, as was mentioned earlier, this is a service that we are providing for free. And we love doing it, yeah. but we are providing this service for free. And we all have different ways of, of how we get this information out there and the time that we spend with everybody. And I will tell you that if you're asking me for some fights, um, you know, we talk about the, the list, right? My list when I'm doing pickups is no more than three people. And the reality is I just can't keep track of everybody that I want to fight with because the answer is yes. I want to fight everybody. Um, and I just can't keep track of more than three at a time, honestly. And that's just something that I've just learned that I just don't have the capacity for. So if I tell you I've already got three in my list, you're going to have to hang out for a bit. Like yep. when I get done with the one fight, ask, be there and get on the list. And the thing is, is if I, if I tell you you're number three and you, and you disappear, I'm easily going to forget where number three was. And I'm not going to hunt you down. Right. And, I'm, and that doesn't mean that you have to just wait exclusively for me and you got to wait for me to get done with those three fights, but just be present, be cognizant of, of like kind of where you are 
And, you know, like, like Alec was saying, there's going to be somebody else there that you can get some more fights in while you're, while you're waiting. Um, but you know, you gotta, you, you have to be patient and it's just, we, we only have so much capacity and we really genuinely want to, to provide as much as we can to as many different people as we can, but there's, there's only so much. So you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to, to hang out for a bit and just make sure that you, you're just checking in on me, you know, you know say, Hey, you, you know, am I still number two? Am I, you know, am I still next? You know, am I still number three? Right. Just be patient. Um, and, and understand that it, if you get bumped, it's not because we didn't want to fight you. Uh, it's, there's a lot. And we're, and, and sometimes when you've got that many people that you not just fighting, we're not just fighting people, we're working with these people and we're training them. And that's, it, it's a lot. Sometimes be patient be present, be around so that when your turn comes, we see you there. Yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. All right. Well, uh, we're kind of running up. We got about 10 more minutes. Anybody else, uh, best you want to cover anything? I, th- I heard there's some melee at Penn. <laughs> there is. Um, <laughs> actually, I do want to address a little bit of post Penzik stuff. And I, one of the things Bronis, you, you had said, Hey, you actually got to take your armor out. And that's important. But what's more important is giving your body a chance to recover. Please bear in mind that some of you, especially if you're on staff, will have been on site for upwards, in some cases, I think of a month yeah. uh, in the heat and camping with, well, lousy sanitation for the most part. Give yourself a chance to recover when you come home. And then I would like to suggest that you think about the things that you learned. And if for some reason, it's fallen out of your head or you can't quite remember it, or maybe there's something you're like, well, I'm pretty sure they said to do X or Y. Perhaps while it's, well, what you've forgotten is fresh in your mind, you might want to reach out to the person shortly when after you've gotten home and had a chance to sort of decompress a little bit. Once your post, your PPD, your post pensic depression is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a thing up here. I got my post pensic depression. Um, when that's done, say, reach out to the person and say, when we were fighting, you said to do the thing. Uh, I think I have misremembered it, or I think I've forgotten part of it. Could perhaps you refresh my mind on just like the bullet points? Uh, and I and I think that that would be a, a good thing. And that way, it'll just ensure that you've, you've gotten the points that you want, and it'll give you something to work on for, say, the next year or something. You know, it's, it's interesting. Also what we have not said is sunscreen. I got a little private text message. Sunscreen is super important. So please remember sunscreen on your hand, on your face is especially important. If you don't like the goopy stuff on your hands, and I do not, you can get the stuff that kind of looks like a deodorant. You can just like kind of paint it onto your face. I use it. It doesn't melt. Please use sunscreen. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. And on that point, um, you know, you, you were talking about forgetting things. The, some ways, the best ways not to forget something is if you know it's important to you, go home and tell somebody. Go tell your fighting buddy. Go tell somebody else at your practice because they will help you. And if they do the same thing, you're helping each other in your own local area bring that culture of learning to your practice. And that that really is is a big part. I asked, I, I'll fight people. And after they're done, I'm like, who's your knight or you know, who, who, who's your main person at your fight practice? And I go, are they here? Can you go get them? And I'll talk about the thing that you wanted to learn so that they know about it and what we were working on. Um, that's a great way to make sure you don't forget it. The other piece is um, something we do locally is kind of have an after action report or review at our first fight practice back home. You don't necessarily need to be in armor. We just come and say, hey, you know, we do this a lot at practices and that is, hey, well, you know, what did you get out of Penzik? What do you want? You know, you're, you're all motivated now. Tell me what you, you, where you would like to be next year, where, you know, what you want to work on so that if everybody is in there and understands what you want, the better they can try to meet your goals and push you to those goals. That way it's a community scenario. This is the reason why you have after action reports is to learn where the failure points were, but even more important, how you could have done something better. And, and so think about after action report, you know, everybody's tired. You know, we know what those first practices are like, just turn it into something different. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on something that that Mess was kind of talking about there too. If if you're going to contact me and ask me to clarify what we worked on, you're gonna have to tell me what I told yeah. you because I've worked with a lot of other people since you, and yeah. there's one of me, and there's a lot of you, and 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 you know we end up going over a lot of the same stuff with different fighters, which which I don't mind at all because I realize while I'm saying this for the thousandth time this weekend. I'm, you're hearing it for the first time this weekend, right? But if you say, you know, oh, you, you know, remember what we worked on? No, I do not. Uh, because as soon as I got done working with you, I moved on to fixing somebody else's problem. So you're going to have to tell me what it was that, that, that we worked on. And that's usually enough of a, of a, of a jog to, to give you the concepts. Uh, Ruth Baldrick uh, mentioned that, you know, hey, if you don't have a book and you go out and work all day, and, and get some things you want to work on. I guarantee you there's probably people sitting around your camp at the fire. Let them know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's simple. Something to talk about too. And maybe they'll want to learn it. Yeah. So uh, that's a great call, uh, uh, Baldrick. Loved it. All right. Well, I think we're honing in at the last four minutes. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out and listening. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody at Penzik. I think we all do. Uh, it's, Sean, you're not actually going, are you, this year? No, I'm not going to be there this year. I was going to say, you you traveled like everywhere this year. So uh, it's, it's been a yeah, little bit of a busy time. It's been busy. And there's there's a lot more travel in the last part of this year and the first year, first part of next year. So. Yeah, I kind of had to mitigate the uh, the time off a bit. That, that's all right. We'll see you next year. I have no doubt. And open uh, to. Yep. Everybody remember, there are a lot of great, um, I, you know, I look just like our conversations on Coach's Corner. There are a lot of great conversations uh, out uh, or people that are trainers and know things. Um, go, you know, go to uh, go to our Coach's Corner and uh, discussion group and go to uh you know, go go out to our YouTube and at Coach's Corner and look at some of the discussions we had. And, you know, look at all the different trainers we had and, and try to find them at Penzig. If you have questions, ask them. You know, it, it's look for them. Watch them fight. If, you, if they're fighting, man, I, they, you don't know how many times I've like, what, Elanon and Sean are going to fight? I'm going to get watch. a front row. Yeah, yeah. Go watch. <laughs> I'm right. going to watch that. I didn't even have to I'd pay tickets. That. I didn't have to pay ticket prices for this. This is awesome. And also wow. try to try to try to hunt down the people that are farthest away from you. Yes. If you're from the East Coast, find the people from the West Coast. Find the people you're not going to randomly run into at something else on the East Coast. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. And you know, again, I hope everybody gets a chance to go to Pendik and and get to learn their stuff and get to learn the things they wanted to learn. They go in with a plan. They execute the plan as best they can. We know there's stuff that happens at Penzik. Maybe some rain, maybe not rain, maybe some heat, maybe not heat. Who knows? It's Penzik. Uh, maybe all in one day. You never know. Uh, so, uh, but one way or the other, I'm hoping that uh, we can make this Penzik uh, as good as so many other Penziks and, uh, and we get a chance to all maybe meet each other here and there. Uh, just a reminder, uh, one o'clock to five o'clock uh, out on, uh, out on the battlefield. Um, I would say just because the people arranging this is, uh, uh Baroness Saib and Sir Louis, uh, it'll probably be out towards, uh, in front of, or just above where mid realm Royals battlefield fly is. Um, it's right after that, that is done around five o'clock, we're going to do kind of a meet and greet, but I can guarantee you probably through the whole thing, there may be a lot of meeting and greeting going on. Uh, I know that, uh, we've had a few years here and we'd love to be able to meet some folks. So, um, I hope uh, hope we get that chance, and uh, we'll uh, try to put some stuff up through Penzik here and there, so people can check on uh, on our site to see what might be going on. Um, so, Sean, we got a great episode next week, I think, right before Penzik. I think a few of us are driving, but uh, going to Penzik that day. But Bus is going to stay home just for everybody. What's that episode? That's right. So this is this is going to be Bess's, uh I believe she described it as a rant. Um, so 
um, you know, tiny people ranting is always a good times, right? So <laughs> actually she's, she's going to be ranting about being the tiny person. So uh, tune in for that. So uh, she, she's got something to say and we want to hear it. Uh, Dude, Eric, thank you for coming out, man. I, uh, I, I love when you're on these things and I, I knew you had a lot of input on this one uh, and I know you're passionate about it. So uh, Penzik, Penzik was certainly the, the incubator for me and a whole crew of other guys where we definitely learned how to fight and you were a big part of that promise. So thank you. So, well, we're going to thank everybody uh, for coming out tonight and listening. Uh, I hope to see everybody and uh, be safe, pack safe, drive safe, and we'll see you all at Pensick. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>